Today we got a pretty special episode. I pulled up on the beach planning on doing a different video and I'll save that one for next time because on the way out, I ran into our boy Vince. You guys saw him last when we caught some link cod on Daniel's boat. Caught his very first link cod. It was a really nice one. But anyway, check out the rod he's using. That's a 13 foot Okuma Hawaiian Custom. I have the 10.7 and they're actually both rated for one half ounce to two ounces. And what I wanna do is at the end of this video, I'm gonna cast both of them down the beach and just see if the 13 footer can really whip out a 110 jerk bait, the Kalisa, farther. The 13 or the 10 seven and he's gonna actually let me cast it around today and we get to see how the 13 footer feels but again it's the same exact rating have you used it a lot so far i've used it about on three different trips now yeah limited out twice for them. oh shoot yes sir all right guys so again at the end of this video we're gonna tie them up exactly the same and give them casts we have similar reels so it should be a pretty even comparison and we're blessed today, no wind, but we are fishing an all outgoing tide today. So it'll be outgoing for the next like six hours. Peak high tide was maybe an hour ago. So based on last video, I really wanna get a fish on the Kalisa. So I got my maximum distance rod right here, but I think I might've found another maximum distance rod. So let's find out. I was gonna do bait and wait today, but Nah. Oh, I just got bit. My drag was way too loose. There's a fish. Yeah, there you go. That's my second cast. I missed one on the first, but Oh, did he come off? He's still there. I think he's still there. Yep, still there. Decent perch on the Kalisa. Second cast. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, so in the previous video, I was continuing to test out that Santium rod. I just wasn't getting the distance and that made me really want to get on some good fish. So it definitely made me throw this around today. And I will be keeping fish today, so I did bring the perch pouch hopefully this is the final version of the perch pouch but check it out first two casts two bites one fish it's a beautiful one i'll take it in the perch pouch you go bud keep you fresh and i get to stay on the hole that i caught you out of um after this cast i'm gonna walk over there and have them switch with me. See if he likes the 10.7, because I don't think he's tried the 10.7 yet. But uh, I do, I'm so curious to see what the 13 footer is like. There's another fish. Oh. Yeah, it's a good fish. That's a nice one. Might have I might have gotten him sideways. Oh my gosh, yeah. What a great bite so far. Three casts, three bites. If this one's in, that's two fish. And three, oh, he came off, he came off. Ah, I just grabbed Vince's uh, 13 footer and I'm gonna let him cast my 10.7 and I'll put a, a 110 on this. This is the 140 that he's been throwing right now. Giant bait and I'm sure he'd be able to catch one. I'm gonna throw a leader on it and uh, start fishing again. All right, for the knot, I'm gonna go with something quick and easy to tie. It's the RP knot. Fold over your, your leader line and it creates this loop. Put the braid through the loop, just like that. Pinch and wrap both the main, or the main leader and the tag end of the leader five times with your braided line one two three four 
five, and then switch hands and wrap upward over those wraps that you just made. Three, four, and five, and then stick it right back in that loop and then pull tight. And you do want to pop it just for extra security. I'm going to go ahead and use my homemade line pullers. I'll even link in the description to a video I made on how to make these super easy, but they save your hands and it allows you to put some really good torque on the line, especially if you're working with 20 pounds or above, it really helps save your fingers. Give it a couple good pops and you're golden. She's 13 foot rod guys. This is going to be fun. All right, my leader is on. I'm going to go ahead and grab a tactical angler clip pack. This is my one pack for the year. I usually burn through a pack of 25 in one year. So this is 2023's version. This allows me to swap out. These are the 50 pound test tactical angler clips. Basically tie them on and this will allow you to not have to keep retying every time you want to switch lures. You can just snap them on. If you guys don't know about those, uh, I will leave a link in the description for these TA clips. But if you don't know, they're game changer. Midway through, they might want a different color. So you just have to swap them out. I, I usually do take the split rings off of my lures so that the tactical angler clip gets to act as the, sw the, the split ring and allow freedom of movement. You can see that I don't have a split ring on there and the tactical angler clip just clips right on, just like that. Shout out to Cali covers too. Let's go, 13 footer. So the nice thing is I got those three casts under my belt with the uh, 10 foot seven and uh, we'll see how this one does i'm excited all right so the first cast i had a wind knot so i got rid of it so now this should do a lot better i was wondering it should be a lot farther than i got it but you can feel that it is a bit heavier than the 10.7 that's for sure ah much better distance on that one Ooh, that sidearm felt pretty good on this long cast or this long rod I'm just trying to find kind of the happy medium on the casting on this thing. Oh, there's a fish. There's a fish. Got him. Come here, buddy. 13 foot rod. The longer your rod, the easier it is to keep tension on that fish. Oh yeah. This one was on the sardine glow. Nice fish. Respectable. Yeah, it's a male. Little male, you could tell by this kind of milky fin right here and it's actually producing some milk too. Yeah. They're going to be spawning soon. And then in a couple months, we're going to start seeing a lot more pregnant females. Definitely a good sign. First fish on the 13 foot rod. Another thing to experiment with when you're trying a new rod is the amount of line between your lure and the tip of the rod. Cause you're trying to create momentum going forward and the rod is meant to load up and spring that energy forward, translating into the lure for your cast. So that's one thing that you want to look at and experiment with. Man, he has a, oh, there's another fish. It's a good one. Oh, that's a good fish. That's a good fish. That is a nice fish. That thing whacked it. Holy crap.
Yeah. That's not a that's that's not a perch. That's not a perch. That's not a perch. Stay on, stay on, bud, stay on. That's not a perch. That's a striped bass. That's a striped bass. Stay on. Stay on. Yeah, that's a striper! Oh, please be legal. I want to do a guillotaku on this guy. I want to do a fish print so bad. I think that's illegal, guys. That's a legal striper. Since I just got this striper, I definitely want to keep him in prime condition and do a fish print on it. And that's exactly what I did. When I got home, I cleaned up the fish. I positioned it how I wanted it to be on the paper. And then I covered the whole thing with ink and dabbed off a bunch of the excess and added a little bit of details. Then I pressed on some rice paper, really rubbing in areas so that I can get the finest detail that I can. And when it came out, it looked like this. And then after that, I painted in the eyes to really give it that full detail. The next step is to mount it and that would help get rid of all of these wrinkles. But I'm pretty happy about how my first striped bass fish print went. What do you guys think? Yeah, that is a 21 inch striped bass, guys. But I'm keeping it. Beautiful fish on the 13 foot rod. I really think that because of all that rain, there's a lot of these guys in the ocean right now and it's just, it's turning on guys. So get out there. It's time. Beautiful fish. Look at those gorgeous stripes. That's so funny. I made a Instagram and Facebook post saying, mark my words, this is gonna be a great striper season. The best we've seen in a while because of all that rain we got. Striped bass are an andromenous species, which means they can go salt or freshwater, kind of like salmon, kind of like steelhead. And all this rain flushed a lot of them back into the ocean that were landlocked all year long last year or longer. So it's definitely nice to see that species in our waters. Oh, that's a good fish. That's a nice fish. Yeah, on the 13 footer. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, the tide's so far out that Carolina rig's pretty much the only option. And it's not like we're getting them every single cast like we were earlier, but it's far and few between, but at least they've been quality bites. If they had been not so quality, I think I would have called it about an hour ago, but I mean, they're able to drop, drop, pull some drag a little bit. Look at that, another quality perch. Another quality 12 or 13 incher. Beauty, beautiful fish. So Vince, what'd you think of the, the 10 foot, the 10 seven? Honestly, man, the 10-7 is, as I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna say it's winning for the simple factor of weight. Weight while I'm fishing on the surf. I spend a couple hours out here casting back and forth and I definitely feel like my arm is loving me right now for using this 10-footer over the 13. Less fatigue? Less fatigue for sure. And then not only that, your van stall is definitely cutting off weight also. Yeah, yeah, the van stall is like nine ounces or so. <laughs> uh, so that's definitely a, a lightweight setup. And I have to agree, the 13-footer is a bit more taxing over time. Like I definitely felt it in my my real hand too because <laughs> it's sitting way out here. And then, I mean, how, how much longer is the butt? The butt is significantly longer. You got at least, looks like two inches longer on the butt section on this. So if you do plant on your hip, you are extending quite a bit more. Just for kicks and giggles, I'm gonna go ahead and tie a Kalisa on the 10-7 and I'm gonna make 10 casts as far as I can. And the farthest one, we're gonna mark with a sand spike. And then after the 10 casts on the 10-7, I'm gonna switch reels so this it's the same exact setup. I'm gonna take that reel and put it on the 13-footer and make those same casts and just see which one overall. But 
I mean, one thing that I think might happen is I think the 107 could still win just because for muscle memory, I'm a lot more used to throwing that, but I'm going to give it my best shot to maximize distance on both and we'll just see what we uh, come up with. So, all right, let's get it. Let's do it. So again, this is the 10 foot seven Okuma Hawaiian custom. About five feet. All right, five foot more, okay. Two feet short. Maybe like five, six feet short. Three more casts. And I'm casting with the wind. Same as the last, about six feet back. Ooh, about three feet short. Three feet short, damn. Last cast. I'm surprised, I think the, the 13 might be able to have it. It looks a lot it looks a lot closer than when you're actually fishing. Way short, huh? Way short, like 10 feet. Dang. All right, so that's the farthest. That was the 10 foot seven. Now I'm gonna take the van stall off the 10 foot seven and put it on the, tw on the 13 footer. So guys, this is all really bro science. Like we're not, being super scientific with it we're just <laughs> like just seeing overall who like which rod gets farther right what we can do you know yeah <laughs> all right so i took the van stall same setup same line same leader same lure everything's the same only thing different is now i got this 13 foot rod this 13 foot beast of a rod look at this thing it's a 13 foot rod right there Wow, crazy. All right, here we go. 13 foot rod, half ounce lure. I'll call at least right here. First cast. First cast. At least six feet. Six feet farther? At least six feet farther. Farther, holy crap! Farther. <laughs> Mercy! <laughs> oh man! First cast. So that was cast number two, eight left. Good cast. Three feet shorter than your farthest cast with that rod. Jesus. Whew. Two feet short of your farthest cast. And for the fish, ooh, six inches shorter. Cast number seven. Oh, about six inches farther. Six inches farther than it, nice. Yes, sir. That was good. All right, guys, let's take a look at the verdict. What do you think, are you surprised? Surprised? Not too much, honestly. I no. mean, you can tell with the tip of the rod, it's got maybe a little bit more flexibility because it is 13 feet, but that 10, it's getting all of the same action. It's just three feet shorter. So that one right there was the 10-7. That one there was the 13-footer. So the question is, do you think that this much more casting distance on a Kalisa is worth the extra weight? Negative. <laughs> Negative. My own, my own personal opinion. No, I kind of wish I could have done this at the shop before purchasing, but I will know to get a 10.6 next time. <laughs> That's cool, man. Well, there's definitely still room for the 13. I, I really liked how it handled with the uh, Carolina rig, but at the same time, the 10.7 is still in that sweet spot. And if going two feet more and probably two or three ounces heavier, and having a longer butt section uh, means six foot difference about about yeah. six foot and then again that's with the kalisa too that's with something bigger that's catching more windage in the air if you use something like a weight yeah, maybe you get more significant distance between the two yeah we ain't got time for that right now <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully that helped you guys i think i think it was definitely a good test definitely bro science but oh, yeah. um we made it happen i think 10 10 was a good sample size in terms of casts I mean, we can go crazy and do like 20 or 50 or 100, but um, <laughs> 10 is definitely sufficient. 
<laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah, it but ultimately it was a good session, huh? Good session, good outcome, good day, still sunny, no clouds. It's lunchtime. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, that was sick. It definitely started off hot. We got here as the tide was going, uh, starting to go outgoing, and we fished it halfway through the outgoing tide. Peak high tides in a few hours, or peak low tide, I mean, is in a few hours. So it was awesome and picked up that striped bass, which I'm gonna print. So <laughs> I'm really excited about that. Stay tuned on Instagram, you'll probably see that. But other than that, I'll uh, leave a video right here of whatever YouTube thinks you should watch next from the channel and definitely subscribe. We will catch you guys on the next one. Vince, thank you, bro. Of course, man, hook to cook. Come out and fish with us. Yeah.